What's going on people, it's your boy NGS, back at it with another video, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about backwards compatibility. Xbox has been making the news rounds recently, considering they just dropped a major update for backwards compatibility on the Xbox Series consoles. Xbox is going to begin rolling out FPS Boost compatibility updates. Now, I know a lot of y'all probably have some questions. What is FPS Boost? Why should we care about it? Why are we still talking about old ass games in 2021? And third, and most importantly, Neo, how in the world are you releasing a video, an edited video, the exact same time Xbox drops the news about backwards compatibility updates? Do you know something that we don't know? And all of those questions, ladies and gentlemen, will be answered in due time. But yes, let's talk about it, ladies and gentlemen. FPS Boost, what is this and why should we care about it? Well, FPS Boost, for those who are unaware, is essentially... A boost to your frames per second. Hence why it's called FPS Boost. I mean, sometimes you don't need a fancy name. Just call it like it is. If you guys want to get the full gist of what FPS Boost is, I will have a link down below in the video description. But for those who want to tune in and hang out with me while I read through this update, here we go. So it should come as no shock and surprise, especially if you've been following gaming for the past couple of years, you would know that Xbox has been at the forefront in in most situations, they've been the only player in the game when it comes to backwards compatibility. It started back in the Xbox One days where they announced that 360 titles would be retroactively added in to the Xbox One. And since then, we've seen a lot of cool things come from that. A lot of games have been added to the roster. We got OG Xbox One support, games out there running at native 4K, steady frame rates, a whole bunch of cool stuff has been going on with backwards compatibility. And giving credit where credit is due, while the backwards compatibility is not perfect, you can't play every single game from some generations on your new consoles, the sheer fact that you have access to four generations of games is a thing that I think needs to be applauded, especially right now as many of us are in a dry spell. There's not a lot of games coming out, and given the state of the world, some of those release dates don't look like they're going to stick. The sheer fact that we can play a lot of old games and these old games are looking and running better than they ever have, in my personal opinion, is a plus. And while many of us do buy new systems to play new games, I think that's kind of the gist of it, there are a lot of people out there who buy new systems and they want to play old games. Whether they're veterans who've been gaming on Xbox for 20 years and they just want some nostalgia, or there are people who've just bought Xbox for the very first time. The sheer fact that you can do all of these things on the system is really freaking dope. And like I mentioned earlier, the backwards compatibility is not perfect. Backwards compatibility, at least the approach that Microsoft is doing, is a very costly endeavor. Not just talking about resources, but the time that goes into that. A lot of the R&D, tracking down the developers and publishers, securing licenses to put them on the digital storefronts. There's a lot of stuff that goes into releasing games backwards compatible. So in the years since, backwards compatibility has slowed down tremendously. But Xbox has been really cheeky. If you've been reading between the lines every single time they talk about the new generation of consoles, they keep mentioning backwards compatibility, four generations of Xbox. I always thought that there was way more to that than just saying, hey, four generations of Xbox. And today, we got our first look at it. Well, you guys are getting your first look at it. I've been <laughs> messing around with FPS Boost for the... I should not say how long I've been messing around with it because people are going to tie me to a stake. He can't keep getting away with it! So I'm going to read you guys a little excerpt from the article. As we detailed in October, with the increased CPU, GPU, and memory from our new consoles, all of your existing games look and play better. With certain titles, we can make the experience even better, all with no work required from the developer, and no update needed by the gamer. To that end, the backwards compatibility team has developed FPS Boost, which employs a variety of new methods for nearly doubling, in a few instances, quadrupling, the original frame rate on select titles. Higher, steadier frame rates make games visually smoother, resulting in more immersive gameplay. We partner closely with developers to enhance the experience while maintaining the game's original intent. And while not applicable to all games, these new techniques can push game engines to render more quickly for a buttery smooth experience beyond what the original game might have delivered due to the capabilities of the hardware at the time. I don't know how to simplify that more than they already have, ladies and gentlemen, but yeah, thanks to the added horsepower of this new generation of Xbox consoles, 
we can actually get games running at higher performance levels than they originally were on the older systems, which has always been a point of contention when it came down to backwards compatibility on consoles. Whereas on PC, when you have a certain setup, a rig, and you're running games at a particular performance, when you upgrade that PC in a few years, it doesn't require any extra work from the developer. So if you were running a game at 60 frames per second, and that's all your PC could do at the time, when you have beefier hardware and you go back to that game, in some situations, you could be running it at double, triple the frame rates, running at higher resolution with higher quality assets and textures and things like that. But all of those things have been exclusive to PC for the longest time, just given the nature of that ecosystem and how they do things. With consoles, given that they are closed off set-top boxes that you put under your TV... The games are designed to work on that particular SKU, and unless we see a developer go out there and release an update, whether it is uncapping the frame rate or doing a full-on next-gen patch as we've seen with some other games, that experience that you are going to get on that console is probably going to be the exact same thing when you keep playing it on newer machines. So if a game is locked at 30 frames per second, just because the Xbox Series X and S has more power, that doesn't mean it's going to run at higher frame rates than that. What we've seen right now is just essentially if the game is supposed to hit its target, whether it's 30 or 60, the new horsepower underneath the consoles is going to get the games to that particular frame rate. Same thing for resolution. If something had a dynamic resolution where it was aiming for 4K or aiming for 1080p, these newer consoles are going to bump it up to that resolution, which is great. But if you have a situation where a game is hard locked at a particular resolution, like let's just say if it's a performance mode and it's 900p, 60 frames per second, the odds and the likelihood of it actually being bumped up to 4K, 60 frames per second is slim to none. Again, without developer intervention. So what we're seeing here from Microsoft is actually making backwards compatibility updates and improvements more of a system level thing rather than on a case-by-case -case basis now similar to how xbox has been handling backwards compatibility they are going to be releasing games in waves so the first wave of games that is available that sport the fps boost compatibility updates are Watch Dogs 2 ufc 4 new super lucky's tale and sniper elite 4 and i got a chance to check out two of these games over the past week those being new super lucky's tale and sniper elite 4 in the case of Sniper Elite 4, this was a game that released last generation that had a target of 60 frames per second. And if you've watched any of the performance analysis, you would know that it never really got to that point, even on the beefier hardware. Now, the game runs at 60 frames per second, courtesy of the FPS boost compatibility. And in the case of New Super Lucky's Tale, a game that ran 60 frames per second on the Xbox One X and the Series X, this game now runs at 120 frames per second, which is just absolutely insane to think about. They literally doubled the frame rate. Now, of course, the mileage is going to vary in terms of what games receive what improvements. Xbox really hasn't detailed at great length the extent of what the improvements could be. It could be anywhere from getting a game that was supposed to run at 60 frames per second all the way up to 60 frames per second. Or it could be a game that runs at 30 frames per second and it was locked. They could double that frame rate to 60 frames per second. We just don't know right now the extent of how this is going to go, but Xbox did say that they are going to be rolling out more updates throughout the year. And there's a lot of heavy hitter titles available on Game Pass right now that are going to be receiving this FPS boost compatibility. Now, what could that mean? Could it be something like The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim? Sure. Could it be other heavy hitter titles such as Fallout 4, Fallout New Vegas? Possibly. There's a metric crap ton of games that were just added to Game Pass via EA Play. A lot of the Xbox 360 titles that are backwards compatible, they're unfortunately hard locked at 30 frames per second and they're also hard locked with the resolution. So with this FPS boost compatibility, we could be getting some of those games running at 60 frames per second, which would make playing some of those console exclusive titles that never got PC ports so much better. The fact that we can run those games that were always at 30 frames per second at a higher resolution and a higher frame rate is just fantastic. The fact that they don't need that much input from the developers is actually freaking insane considering with all the game engines that are out there and all the optimization that comes from re 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 releasing these games on newer hardware it just sounds like a technical nightmare and i am not a software engineer i am not a developer so i don't know what type of wizardry they got cooking up over there in washington but they seem to have cracked the code 
And I guess we'll have to wait and see as far as what updates come out soon. But this is definitely something that I'm going to be looking at uh, more closely as time goes on because I love the Xbox backwards compatibility approach. I love the fact that there's a lot of games out there. Like, let's just take, for example, Spec Ops The Line. You know, I have Spec Ops The Line on PC, but the fact that it just went on sale for five bucks on Xbox, I went ahead and bought it. You know, like a lot of the old school classic 360 games. I went ahead and I bought a lot of those because those are games I don't want to be lost to time. And the fact that they're running even better now is just, uh, it's nice cherry on top. It's not the reason why I bought the Xbox console, but it is a nice little added bonus. And that's all I really got for y'all today in regards to Xbox FPS Boost compatibility update. Post your comments down below about what backwards compatible title you guys would love to see receive this FPS boost. What is your favorite backwards compatible title right now on the Xbox ecosystem? Comment down below and let me know. And for me to you for now, my name is NGS signing out. And like always, I will catch you guys later. Peace.